Hi, this is the second video for the Getting Started with EMS 7.0 series. In this video, we will look at the basic setup and steps that you can follow after you have successfully imported endpoints from an AD domain server. We will see how to create a FortiClient installer, an endpoint profile, and how to deploy FortiClient as well as other features to get started. This EMS already has endpoints imported from an AD domain server. We can use EMS to deploy FortiClient on endpoints. For this, we must prepare the AD server. Let's start off by configuring a group policy on the AD server. Open Group Policy Management in the AD server and right-click the default domain policy setting. This opens the Group Policy Management Editor. A new policy is applied to the entire AD domain. Next, let's configure the required Windows services by going to Computer Configuration, Policies, Windows Settings, Security Settings, and then System Services. In the right panel, we will set Task Scheduler to Automatic, Windows Installer to Manual, and Remote Registry to Automatic. Let's create deployment rules for Windows Firewall next. This time, under Windows Settings, we will select Security Settings, and then choose Windows Firewall with Advanced Security, and then choose Inbound Rules. Right-click Inbound Rules and select New Rule. Then select Predefined and select File and Printer Sharing from the drop-down list. Click Next. Ensure that the File and Printer Sharing checkbox is selected and click Next. Then select Allow the Connection and finish. We will right-click Inbound Rules again to create a new rule. This time, select Predefined and select Remote Scheduled Tasks Management from the drop-down list and click Next. Ensure that the Remote Scheduled Tasks Management box is checked and click Next. Select Allow the Connection and click Finish. As the last step in the AD preparation, we will configure Windows Firewall Domain Profile Settings. We will go to the Group Policy Management Editor and then select Computer Configuration, Policies, Administrative Templates, Network, Network Connections, Windows Firewall, and then Domain Profile. Here, select Allow Inbound File and Printer Sharing Exception. Enable the radio button and provide the FortiClient EMS server's IP address in the text box. We will allow unsolicited incoming messages from these IP addresses and click OK. Next, let's select Allow Inbound Remote Administration Exception and repeat the steps as earlier to create an exception. Lastly, select Allow ICMP Exceptions and right-click to select Edit. Enable the radio button. Then select the Allow Inbound Echo Request checkbox and click OK. To deploy the group policy manually, execute the following command on the AD server to update the group profile on all endpoints. You can also execute this command on any AD client to view the group policy deployed on the endpoints.
the next step would be to add the AD fervor to EMS. This has already been done, as seen in the previous video. As the next step, we will add an endpoint profile to configure for the client software on endpoints. Go to Endpoint Profiles and then Manage Profiles and click the Add button. In the Profile Name field, enter the profile name and configure the required settings on the remaining tabs and then click Save to save the profile. Now let's create a new Ford Client installer, which we can later deploy. Go to Deployment and Installers and select for the client installer. Then click Add. In the new window, the first version tab is where we can set the installer type, release version, and patch. Next, in the general tab, we will give it a name. On the features tab, we can choose the basic and additional security features that we want to add. In the advanced tab, we can enable shortcuts, an installer ID, or an endpoint profile. Let's select the endpoint profile that we had created earlier. In the final tab, we can see the host name and IP address of the Forti Client EMS server, which will manage Forti Client once it is installed on the endpoint. Click on Finish, and we have created a new installer. Now, let's create a deployment configuration by going to Manage Deployment. Then click Add. On the deployment page, we are required to enter our desired name for the deployment. In the Endpoint Group section, we can select the desired endpoint group. The list includes device groups from all imported domains and work groups. Let's select our AD domain. Set the action to install and select the deployment package that we have just created. We can optionally start at a scheduled time and enable the other installation related options. Then enter the domain and username and password and ensure that the deployment is enabled. Then click Save. We can see our deployment here in the Manage Deployment page. If we go to the Endpoint section, we can check the status of our deployment. Here we can see that the installation has started, and after some time, for the client has been successfully installed on the endpoint, and this endpoint is now connected to EMS. Next, let's see how we can set up an SMTP server to enable alerts from EMS and endpoint events. When an alert is triggered, EMS sends an email notification to the configured email addresses. Let's go to the system settings and select SMTP server. Then enter the SMTP server name and port number. In the security section, select none, start TLS or SMTPS for the security type, or select the auto detect button to automatically select the security type. If start TLS or SMTPS is selected, the username and password fields become available. Then enter the email address to send the alert from, and optionally, the email address to send the replies to. Enter the sent email alert subject and message. Under email recipient, we can enter the email address to send the test email to. Then click the button to test the configured email settings, and then click Save. In the Endpoint Alerts tab, we can set a frequency for sending alert emails and we can configure events for which an email should be sent. Now let's take a look at the Status Dashboard page. Here we can see widgets displaying the system information, license information, endpoint connection, and endpoint management. These can be customized to show more or less widgets by clicking on the Manage Widgets button. On the Vulnerability Scan page, you can see more details regarding endpoint vulnerabilities. Let's go to the endpoint in which FortiClient was automatically installed by our FortiClient deployment. 
we can see that it has automatically connected to and is now managed by EMS. And here we can see the EMS and telemetry details. With this, we come to an end of our second video on getting started with EMS 7.0. Thank you for watching. For more technical videos, please visit video.fortinet.com.